Hi, my name is Jesse, and this is the start of hopefully a bunch of different uh, videos which are going to be focused on programming. Uh, specifically game programming, uh, although a lot of this stuff will be applicable to just programming in general. I've done a few videos before about writing music or making sound effects. Uh, I've written some articles on doing artwork, but uh, my main profession is actually programming, so I thought I'd actually talk about something I really know about this time. I'm going to quickly go through my background. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to boost my cred a little bit before if I'm going to be talking and preaching about programming. So I've been programming professionally for 15 years, and the last 10 of that have been in the games industry. And I've worked at three different companies. I've worked on mobile games, I've worked on web games, uh, most of the time was spent on console games. I've used a bunch of game engines, um, Unreal Engine extensively, and some proprietary engines quite extensively. And I've written some game engines too, so I've written a mobile engine, and I've written a bigger web engine, which we use for Immortal Empire. And I've written with a colleague an even bigger 3D game engine, which we're using for our next game. So anyways, I've done a bunch of stuff, but outside of just programming, I have what I would consider three main areas of expertise. One is leading and managing groups of programmers. Um, so I've worked with tons of different people and I've seen lots of different stuff and I've reviewed a lot of code and I have a pretty good sense of what works and doesn't work. Second one is multiplayer. Almost every game I've worked on has had multiplayer and it has its own set of unique challenges with respect to programming. And the third one is engine architecture. So having worked with a lot of game engines and different game engines in the past, as well as written some of my own, I feel like I have a pretty good handle on what sort of structures are effective and which ones are ineffective. And that's going to be related to what we're talking about today. So in any future videos, I'm going to skip over all that stuff and just get to the meat of the discussion. Uh, today I want to talk about a programming principle which is applicable to all programming called don't repeat yourself or dry. Uh, it's a very very important principle and it's something that I think every programmer should know. Now a lot of these things are going to sound kind of obvious especially if you're an experienced programmer but you'd be surprised how often I come across these things even with people that do have a fair amount of experience. So what is don't repeat yourself? Well, it's basically exactly what you would expect. It's when you copy and paste code, a lot of the times when you've got one function that does something and you have another function that does something similar and you copy the code over and then change a few spots and now you've got a new function. But inevitably you're gonna have some duplicated code in there and that's a problem. And so the don't repeat yourself principle, don't repeat yourself principle, is about uh, not duplicating any code. So there's three main problems with duplicating code. The first is that it's a maintenance nightmare. So anytime that you update your code or you want to change it, you have to change it in every single spot that you copied and pasted the code. Which brings me to the second main problem, which is that it introduces errors. So anytime you go to update it, you might only update two of the spots that it actually was copied and pasted to and not the third one. And this is especially prominent and noticeable when you're working with a large group of programmers and someone who isn't familiar with the code might not even be aware that it has been copied and pasted to somewhere else. And this introduces bugs, which are you're going to have to spend time fixing later down the road, probably in a much more unpleasant time, like when you're rushing to get your game out the door. And the third problem is that it's confusing, especially to people who haven't seen your code before. So if you're working by yourself in a bubble, maybe you can get away with it. But for other people that are working with your code, it's much more difficult. You're trying to look at this function and you're figuring, well, what is this doing and how is this one different? And you're trying to diff them in your head. And it's just confusing. It's much more clear if you have less code uh, that's straightforward and does exactly what it is intended to do. So when I've worked with programmers in the past and I've told them to not copy and paste their code, you hear some pretty common rebuttals. And uh, spoiler, they're all just excuses. So <laughs> I'm gonna go over them uh, real quick here. 
the first one, you get this from beginner programmers uh, quite a bit, is that, wow, there's no way I, I could write this without copying and pasting my code. It was, this is the only way I could do it. And, you know, you'll kind of explain to them, you know, the way that you could rearrange it such that it doesn't need code duplication. Uh, but then they'll be like, well, but this one time, this one time, this one piece of code, it was impossible. It couldn't be done. You, it was the only way I had to copy and paste it. And uh, it's dead wrong. It's straight up dead wrong. You, there's always, always a way to rearrange your code or rewrite it such that you don't uh, code duplicate. So, and then you hear from uh, kind of intermediate level programmers, uh, and this one's a bit trickier to debunk, but um, you hear quite often is that, oh, it's faster for me to program it this way. For me, for me, it's faster. I can do this in two seconds, but if I had to rewrite, I have to refactor all this code, it would take me days. And um, I think this is an utterly flawed point of view <laughs> and, and false quite often. So for one thing, it doesn't take into consideration the amount of time that you have to spend uh, debugging things when you've introduced errors. It also doesn't take into consideration the maintenance time of updating in multiple different spots whenever you have to change your code. And I, I'm also just gonna say that it's also straight up not faster to write that way. Um, if you're finding that it's taking you days to write code without duplicating and copying and pasting, uh, it's just because you don't have that experience. Uh, once you have more experience under your belt writing code in that way, then you'll find it's actually quite easy. Um, and you'll feel very comfortable and it'll be like second nature to you. You won't even think about cutting and pasting code anymore. You'll just write it in a robust way to begin with. And then you also sometimes get, I don't want to call them advanced programmers, I'll call them senior programmers who you know, know about this and they're aware of it and they'll even preach it to you. And then, that, yeah, yeah, I know about code duplication. I, I don't do that. Yeah. And then they fucking do it anyways. <laughs> and, uh, and they're just like, well, wow, there's one place, there's one time, blah, blah, blah. this is how I talk. And this one place, I had to do it. Blah. And it's just, there's no excuse for it. There really isn't. Just don't do it. Not even in the one or two places. Don't do it. Get in the habit of writing good code, writing code that doesn't copy and paste, and uh, you won't feel the urge to do it anymore. Okay, so we've gone over what the problem is, copying and pasting code. We've gone over some common rebuttals, and um, we need some solutions. So how do we avoid code duplication? Um, and there's lots of different techniques, uh, so I'm just going to go through them all. And they're not all applicable to every different situation. Uh, but the first one is to just rearrange your code. Now, this uh, is not always possible, but a lot of the times it is more possible than you might think. So, it, so you've got a block of code and another block of code, and you know this one uh, is the original, and this is your copied one, and you've changed some lines. Depending on the nature of those lines that are different, it might be possible just to move them so that they're all adjacent, and then you've got all the you know code that's different in one block and all the code that's the same in a separate block, and then you can just split it into two different functions. Uh, it's very easy and a very, very clean way of solving this problem. Now, sometimes that isn't going to work. Sometimes this code that you have is, uh, you know, that you cannot possibly change the order. But uh, in that case, this is not going to work. So another way of solving this problem is to use conditions. Uh, and this can actually be pretty clean in a lot of different cases. Um, so let's say that you have a method like shoot gun, you're making a gun class and it's the method is shoot. And you have an energy gun or something that doesn't consume ammo. Well, you can, instead of you know, having one method shoot that doesn't call ammo minus minus and another one that does call ammo minus minus, uh, you can just make one method and then pass some boolean or something like, you know, consume ammo. And if it's true, then call the ammo minus minus, otherwise do nothing. And this is a great solution for many different cases. In this one particular case, I have a, a better way of tackling it. There's actually lots of better ways of tackling it. But uh, it's a contrived example to explain what I mean. Um, it, this actually works pretty well, especially if the, there's a lot of different blocks that you can't rearrange. And, um, and, and the, the content of your conditions isn't particularly large. 
Um, this can get a little messy if there are tons and tons and tons inside one method and you're constantly seeing if this, else that, if this, else that. Uh, it also is not a good idea if the size of those if blocks are really, really large. So, uh, and especially if they are changing the context and, and semantic meaning of the function. So in our weapon example, if you had, say, a projectile launching weapon like a grenade launcher and then you had a trace weapon like a machine gun and you tried to use a condition to separate out the you know different code so one might say you know you have your common code ammo minus minus and then you'd have well if projectile weapon all this code to like spawn an entity and give it momentum and have it travel through the air and whatever and then there's other code that's like else if i'm a trace weapon fire a ray tracer and do any sort of custom code with respect to those types of weapons. Uh, that's probably going to be some pretty big blocks of code and they're pretty inherently different too. I know they're both shooting a weapon but they're pretty different. So it doesn't really make sense to have one line that is you know common and then two wildly different methods. Well no it doesn't. Um, now, the answer here is not to code duplicate. You might be thinking, well, it's one line. Oh, fuck it. I'll just copy and paste it. And I don't recommend that. <laughs> uh, that one line can very quickly creep into many, many lines. What starts out as ammo minus minus you know, is going to turn into, well, then I have to update the UI, or I have to do this, or uh, check only do that under these circumstances, or whatever. That can very quickly uh, become uh, you know, 10 lines or 15 lines, and now you've just cause the same problem. So, um, and there's other ways of solving it, very simple ways. Uh, another way would be to use inheritance or class composition. Um, I'm probably gonna do a whole other video on whether to use inheritance or class composition to solve problems because that's a pretty big uh, subject on its own. Um, but let's just say for now that we're gonna use inheritance to solve this. So if you're not familiar with inheritance, I hope you are, but if you aren't, it's when you have a parent class and a derived child class inherits all of the properties or many of the properties and uh, methods of the parent. And you can optionally override them. So uh, in this case, you might have a base weapon class that would do your ammo minus minus, and then a child class, projectile weapon, and another child class, um, uh, trace weapon. And this one would override the shoot method call the parent so that the you know, minus minus gets called in the ammo and then do all this projectile launching code. And the trace weapon would do the same thing except it would fire all of its trace code. And it's much easier to manage. There's no code duplication. Uh, they're nicely separated into their own classes that make sense. And um, yeah, you've, you've just solved code duplication using inheritance. Um, in that particular case, you probably want to use composition, but whatever, let's ignore that for now. So, and then the last approach, which is my favorite, and the one you probably want to use as much as possible, which is to use data to drive how your code functions. Um, so in the consume ammo case, rather than having a Boolean that would flip on whether you should or shouldn't consume ammo, just make a variable like num ammo consumed and set it to zero for those weapons that don't consume ammo. So you'd have the same code running, but you have a different weapon that assigns different values to its variables that will then give it different functions. And this is a really, really clean way of writing your code. So if you have your data drive how your code functions, it's easy to read. Now you don't have to have, certainly you don't have to have two methods. You don't have to have that Boolean in branch condition in there. And this can be extended to all sorts of things. So uh, that is a really, really great way of solving this code duplication problem a lot of the time. All right, uh, I'm going to quickly jump back to functions. I should point out that uh, functions are useful in some cases to avoid code duplication. That's their whole point. Uh, just not in the case that I'm describing, really. So a function's great if you've got uh, something that you need to repeat a lot of the time and you're using it all throughout your code. Uh, let's say it's something simple like square root, okay? And rather than you know, writing the code to implement square root all the time uh, in line to each method, you can just write a function, you call it. So if, and I think everyone kind of understands that uh, that's how you should use functions. But I just wanted to address that obviously 
functions are used to avoid code duplication. So let's just recap the solutions here. So one, rearrange uh, is always the easiest and simplest approach if that is possible. Two is to use conditions. There are certain cases where that's a nice, clean and simple solution. Uh, three is to use inheritance or class composition. Uh, that's great for big chunks of code. And when they are expressing in, uh, different entities that have different meanings. And the last is use data to drive your code, which is my personal favorite. All right, so that's it for this video. I would love to cover so many other topics I want to cover on programming. Um, but if you enjoyed this and want to hear more, then you should uh, subscribe to the channel and then you will hear more, provided that you come back and listen to the things that I am saying. Um, all right, I'm out of here. Bye.